because of their ungodliness. I wanted to read that to you. Folks get so upset. Oh, oh, them poor Canaanites, them poor people, they, they just got misguided and they got it was because of what they did. Yeah. And, and the iniquity had filled up, the cup of their iniquity had filled up, and God was going to destroy them. He did the same thing with the Israelites when they got to be. Year, hundreds of years later when they got to doing the same thing. In fact, in one place, it says they did worse than the nations that were before them. God kicked them out too. That's his land. That's his. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So, you know, he'll put up, he'll sit down. He'll tear down, he'll, he'll build up. It's in God's hand. Now, I know, I know, I know we get to be, well, well God, if you want to, if you're going to pursue this, and if you're going to, you, you know, hurry up. Hurry up, God. I want to see. I, I made that statement before. I made that in my prayer. God, I want to see. You know, I, 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 you know and, and some things I can't see and some things I can't. It's the same, same with Moses. Moses got to see from something, but he didn't go in. Oh, I, I'm getting a, a, a little off. But, but his, his absolute necessity was to teach these people over and over again. Write it down for them. Speak to any of your sons, any grandsons here. And, and all that, speak to your children, all that, teach them the word of God. And Moses said, when you get there, now see, they ain't made it there yet. They're right at it, but they ain't made it there. When you go in, don't you take up the things and abominations of those people. Don't you learn after their doings and after a way. You would think, now, now common sense would tell any kind of a military guy, if God gives you power to whip somebody and kick somebody out, don't act like them. Would, would common sense tell us, uh, the same thing. Now, now, don't fall out too bad with the Israelites. Us Christians are just as bad. Uh, God has been good to us. Uh, our Lord showed us compassion and mercy. He's spared us. He's sustained us. He's given us. And if we're not careful, we'll, we'll turn our backs on him. The first little time hits and we don't go, well, I'm not going back to church. I'm not going to see God. I'm not going to pray. I'm not. Listen, it, 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 my, the very thing that I help you be the thing that you will leave off. The reading of God's word, praying, your prayer life will suffer when you go to not trust in God. When, when you go not to put him first in your life. When you go to seek him after these other things, it, it saps your joy. It saps, and you'll quit praying. You quit reading the word. You quit going to church. You quit going. The very thing that God helps you with and blesses you in and, and feeds you with and, and, and all, you'll quit doing it and complain the whole time God's not showing me stuff anymore. God, God's going to show me. Listen, folks, pray. God help me. I can't tell you, I can't ask you when you'll see certain things. What your prayer is, I do not know. That's between you and God. But I'm telling you, if you're an honest heart and, and for the goodness of God uh, in your heart, and you're seeking after the goodness of God, then he'll help you. He'll, he'll stay with you. It's his word. He said he would. All right. Uh, now, I, I, let's, let's, let's go on and read. Um, uh, I, all right, I, I want it. Now, the, the title of the lesson is The Promise of a Prophet Like Moses. Now, my, uh, oh my, I meant to. Goodness. Well, it, actually, it is in the last. Uh, Mike, turn over to the last chapter of Deuteronomy. I think it's, what, 30, 34 or something. Yeah. Uh, they, in the last two or three verses. And I think, I think go with about verse 10, see if that's it. In the last chapter, read that. Read that. Now, this is Moses. And now, Moses did not write this. Now, I can't tell you who did. I think it might have been Joshua. I don't know who wrote this. But at this time, Moses is gone when this is written and added into it. Now, some of the book of Deuteronomy, he wrote most of it, yes. All right. But go ahead and, and read that. This is concerning Moses. It's not Moses bragging on himself. It's, go, go ahead, brother. Read that. Start with verse, I think it's verse 10. Mm -hmm. And there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, and all the signs and the wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh, and to all his servants, and to all his land, and all that in all that mighty hand, and in all the great terror which Moses shewed in the sight of all Israel. That ain't the last verse, is it? Yes. That was the last verse. So you read from 10 on to the last verse. So, so Moses, there's not. Now, he, he, here, God's going to tell him, and I'm going to read it to you. I already had his son's lesson. Well, I already have a prophet like you. Now, that means that all those, Daniel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, did not come close. 
I'll say it like this, did not achieve to the closeness of God that Moses had. He said, God said, or the, the fellow that wrote it concerning Moses, God spoke to him face to face as a friend. Uh, and, and, and he got, now, now listen, when Aaron and Moses needed a question answered, they went to their tabernacle and God answered them. It did, and I, 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 I'm going to tell you, that's the way we like to have our prayers answered is instantaneously. Charles, when we go and bow our knees to God, we want God to answer the prayer right then. But now we're not Moses, and we're not one of the prophets. Now God's still God. He can answer prayer anyhow he wants to. In time, any place he gets ready to. But, but now we're after here a prophet that is like unto Moses according to his word. Uh, uh, let, let me let me go ahead and get started on this. Then I, then I want to I, I want you, uh, uh, Mike, if you would give me. <coughs> uh, oh wow, we're gonna be jumping around. Uh, yeah, well, I, I guess hmm, I, I guess I better have you go, go first to the Book of Acts. Uh, go go first to the Book of Acts, chapter chapter two. Start right there. But anyway, let me read just a little bit. And I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you. All right. Now the title of our lesson: uh, a, a, a prophet. Like Moses. All right. Mike just read to you out of Deuteronomy where there was not, there arose a not another prophet like Moses. So there's got to be a reference to something else other than just a prophet. Or I mean, now, that Samuel had communion with God. Isaiah, Jeremiah, all of those prophets, and even the minor prophets in the book had communion with God. God would answer their prayers. God spoke to them and God answered them. And God sent deliverance. To the two Israelites, and they, they, that God spoke to them people, and they obeyed God and were delivered for for the for the tribe for the land of Israel in wars and battles and miracles. I, I, Elisha, uh, Elijah, all of those old great prophets spoke to God. God spoke to them. They interpreted for the people. They inter they, they they were in tune with God, and God and the people got their answer from God through prophets. So they were great prophets. But there was none quite like Moses until. All right, let, let me read this a little bit there, and I'll, I'll have you uh, read some of this, uh, Mike. Uh, I didn't give you where, did I? I did tell you. Uh, yeah, well, I didn't tell you what chapter. That's, that's a pretty, pretty good bunch of chapters there. Uh, did I tell you two? Yes. All right, start with verse 22 and uh, verse 22 and 24. You don't have to read that, but just a minute. Hold on just a minute. Uh, verse 15. The Lord thy God... Uh, well, let me go. I, I think I left out. I read it initial. But, but verse 13 in our text. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. Now, well, let me read it. For these nations which, shall, which thou shalt possess hearken unto observers times and diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee to do so. Now, folks, I'm not going to change the word of God. But I'm going to tell you that word there means God won't put up with it. That's what that means. When God sowed it, not for me, he sowed it, not for you to do that. That means God ain't going to put up with it. God's telling you, don't do it. That means he don't want you doing it. Uh, yeah, and he's not going to put up with it if you do. All right, so, so now verse 15. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. According to all that desires of the Lord. Now, this is when they stood up at the giving of the commandments. Now, I'm going a little too far here, but I won't, I won't finish. Uh, desires of the Lord thy God in the Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire anymore, that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them, and all that I shall command him. Now, let, 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 me, let, me, let me stop there. Now, uh, the, the Lord said here, God said, now this is when the fire, the fire, the mountain was on fire. God spoke to them those Ten Commandments. I meant to write that down. In an audible voice, they heard God speak, and it scared them so bad. That they said, oh, they feared for their life. Listen, uh, God, God will give respect to people. 
He really will. And I'm telling you, the closer you get to God, the more you're going to respect Him. And if you hear the voice of God, and if you read His Word like you should, you'll respect God. You, you, you'll honor Him. You need to get reverence Him in that He's telling you. I don't understand it. I don't necessarily say, uh, sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so says, we don't have to live like that no more. But it looks like to me, the way God's telling me to live, I better live like that. Yeah. Regardless. Right. I better obey the voice of God. The commandments, the written word of God is going to stand throughout forever and ever. One jot or one tittle will not be changed in it. It's, it's not going to, it's not, it'll all be fulfilled. Yeah. All right. So we get to a place here. I'm, I'm going to try to go kind of fast, y'all. I, I, I may be going a, a little too fast. But we're going to a place here. Now, and God's telling Moses and, and spoke to the people uh, through God. God spoke to Moses. And from there on, Moses spoke to the people. Because the voice of God made them fearful. I mean, it, 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 it trembled. They thought they were going to die listening to the voice of God. Uh, and, and, all right, so they said, don't, don't do that anymore. When they, they pray, we don't do that no more. Speak to Moses, and we'll do what he tells us to. All right, all right, now, now this is what Moses said. And God told them, that they, they prayed pretty good, Moses. He said they prayed a good thing. That, that's what he told Moses. They, they, they said, all right, so I'll speak. I'll give, them a, I'll give them prophets. I'll raise them up a prophet that they will it'll come from their own people. Listen, folks, there can't be no other interpretation of this than he's speaking. I'll try to get to the point. That he's speaking about the Lord Jesus Christ, the very Son of God. In fact, I, I, oh my goodness, I, I want to do it. Well, let, let's uh, go, go ahead and start. I, I'm going to start backwards and work forwards, if that's possible. Uh, give, me, give me that in 22 and, and at least 24. You know, you don't have to read 23, but you can. 22 and 24, read that. Um, Ye men of Israel. Hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Yeah. 24. Whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. All right, flip over and give me 7, chapter 7 of Acts, verse 37. Uh, Peter, at that first down on Pentecost, this is his message. I mean, that was his message here that he read. People knew that nobody could do these miracles except God with them. Peter said, that you already know. He's an approved of God. All right, go, go ahead, 7, seven verse 37. Peter. This is that Moses, which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, ye shall hear him. Now, that, he said, this is, that's reference to our Lord being crucified and, and the Holy Ghost coming and, and, and ministering through Peter. Now, he said, this, is talking about that, this is that, read that for, one more time. This, this is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, him shall you hear. Twice, I read it to you in the Sunday school lesson, this is the fulfillment of that prophet that, 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 is being, that, 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 that Moses told them people, God spoke to him, Moses told the people, he'll raise you up a prophet out of you, uh, out of your brethren. All right? Now, this is a reference. It, it, it can't be no other. There's, I, I got to doing a comparison between what Moses did and our Lord did. Uh, uh, you know, even just on the fact, even by scripture, he said the scriptures are full, testifying of me. Uh, the word of God had ministered to him. Now, you couldn't get it all down. But now, I, I tell you, I, I want to, now, now, if you would, Mike, uh, wow, I might as well go ahead and jump over to, well, give me, give me, uh, uh, well, you're in Acts. You don't need to flip on over there. To look. You might as well flip on over there to uh, 1 Timothy and then write on a book or two some Hebrews. I'm going to get 1 Timothy uh, chapter 2, verse 5. Uh, yeah, 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 let's go ahead and get that. And then put your finger uh, in Hebrews. Uh, okay, I got but 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5. I've about quit marking these in my Bible because I've run out of markers. Mike does such a good job. So, so I, you know, and, and, and thank you. And it's not that he's the, he's the 
He's the ugliest or the prettiest. It, it's not that. It's just it, it's kind of worked out like that. I, I, I might have liked his name. I don't know. But uh, but he does a good job. And thank you, Mike. Thank you for your help. Thank you for reading in between the lines. God bless you on that stuff. All right. Now go ahead. Go ahead and read First Timothy two and five. Now 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 listen, folks. This is pretty much settling the question right here. Go ahead. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ. Or wow. the man Christ Jesus. Wow. That, that, that's, that's it. One God, one mediator. Listen, all these other devices that Satan's come up with and people run to, our nation, can, 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 you know our leaders a lot of time. Now, I'm not saying this one, but our leaders will, will go to, I'll just say it like this, fortune tellers. Uh, trying to decide what's what's the best move to make. Folks, I know, I know this. We run into things where we're in the valley of decision. We need God's answer and we need it now. And we don't always get it like that. Can I tell you, we pray and we seek God and we don't always get it as soon as we want it. But I'm telling you what, my faith. You continue serving God. Go to bed. God, I do not know what to do in this situation. I, you, you know, and, I, and I've told y'all before, I used to get so upset uh, with Listen, when, when yeah, yeah, kids, my, they weren't kids, they, they, they're grown men, get on the job, we decide which way to attack the job. Well, the first thing I do, uh, you know, I didn't know which way to do it. Well, I'm stupid enough to give Jonathan and David a voice. And they never was the same. I think we ought to do it this way. I think we ought to go around this way. We can't do it this way because we'll walk the whole sheep from the river. Uh, we can't do it this way. We can't do it that way. And, and, and finally, after a few minutes, I just, and I've told you before, I just, I said, boys, let's do something if it's wrong. <laughs> you know, I mean, we've got to do something. Now, that, that's kind of a foolish thing. But I'm telling you, when you don't know which way to go, put your hope and trust in God. Pray. Now, don't start out without prayer. And don't start out without making things right with God. Have things right with God and just say, God, I feel like I've got to do something. Will you go in front of me? Will you direct my path? Will you put a light to my path and direct my footsteps? Oh, God, I trust you to do it because I don't know what to do. Now, there are always some times when you come across that you don't know what to do and you have prayed. And the answer is not. God is there listening to you. He knows your situation. This goes you confused about it. You ain't confused, God. God's not saying, well, David, let me get back with you. I'll have to think this one out. That, that God already knows. Yes. He knew before you ever got into it. He knew before the problem ever was there. Right. Uh, now, uh, if you would, uh, Mike, oh, my goodness. There's they, they, they so many things I could go here. Uh, in fact, I, I, you put your finger in mm -hmm. Hebrews. Start with chapter 3 there. Hold on just a second there. But I want to read. I, I want to go into the New Testament here. Not that I want to read some, but I, I'll keep up. Uh, uh, just a second. I'll get there in just a minute. See, I told you I depend on Mike. <laughs> Got to quit that. He depends on God, not Mike. Amen. chapter 17. Uh, this is at the Mount of Transfiguration. There's so much in that. But I want you to know the scripture is plain to name that Moses was there talking to Jesus. The man that said of your kindred, of your people, he raised up a prophet like unto me. Uh, he's going to be great. Uh, he's going to be the very son of God. And he's there communing with the Lord at the Mount of Transfiguration. I'm not going to get into all that, but I will. Uh, uh, verses 5. Yeah. Let me see here. What in the world? Uh, let, let me get verse 5. And while he yet spake, behold, a bright, now, now Moses, and, and he's in verse 3, Moses and Elias, talking with him. Verse 5. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice of the cloud, which said, out of the cloud, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when his disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. Uh, uh, now, now this, this here, uh, wow. Uh, Mike, give me, let's, let's, 
go, let's go with Q. Uh, give me Hebrews chapter 3. Uh, give, give, me, give me 2 and 3. Skip 4, 5 and 6. Give me 2 and 3 and then I'll under it. Hebrews chapter 3. Now, what I'm trying to do, folks, is set up the guideline to where they, I've already read to you one God, one mediator between man and God, the man Christ Jesus. That's already established. That's the word of God. That's absolutely true and will not be changed. Not ever. They're not never coming up. Folks, can, you know, I, I don't want to get off on something here. Can, can I tell you, folks that have received revelations from angels, Paul tells us about that. Though an angel of light, or an angel as of light, or however he said, appear to you, uh, and it don't back up the word of God, can't even curse. Right. Can, can, can I tell you, now I don't mean to fall out with religions, but I, I won't even name the religion. But there's a religion that actually, in fact, is several. In fact, most of them are inspired by angels. Uh, showing one here in the United States uh, where the golden something was or something like that. He started a whole a, a revelation. It was revealed to him by angels. Now, angels are ministering spirits of God. They testify the things of God. But as far as revealing to them, they are the sons of God or they are God revealing truths to them. You better be careful of that religion. Now, y'all search that out for yourselves, see who it is. I'm not even going to say it. But go ahead and give me, give me that, brother. Two and three first. Who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, yeah. and as much as he who had built the house had more honor than the house. Give and me five and six. And Moses barely was faithful in all his house as a servant, testimony of those which were to be spoken after. But Christ as a son over his own house, wow. whose house are we? Yes. We hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of hope firm unto the end. Now Moses was faithful. Uh, we read to you there arose another not, a prophet not like Moses. And Moses said, God said you're going to send you a prophet of your people. Now here is the testimony that he is the Lord Jesus Christ. Moses was faithful. He testifies of his faithfulness even in the New Testament. Do you know most religions over uh, the Muslims and all that uh, recognize Moses as the lawgiver? That, that's, what they, that's what they call it. Israelites call him the lawgiver. Muslims call him the lawgiver. They all recognize him, and yet his very words say, I'm telling you, there's coming one after me. Kind of like John the Baptist said. That he's going to raise up a prophet from you. Now here, when I'm reading to you, have mind to, as many do, all of the guarantees that Jesus Christ is <coughs> that prophet, is that son of God, is that redeemer, is that mediator between God and man. There is no other. Folks, can I tell you, yeah, I, uh, Jesus has got your answer. Jesus can help you. Jesus will answer you. Jesus has the answer to your problem. Jesus has everything for you. One mediator between God and man. If you need to pray the Father in my name, Jesus said, and he'll give it to you. Yes. All right, so, so whatever we have here, folks, you don't, please don't go to these extremes of sometimes asking our brothers and sisters is the wrong thing to do, especially asking people that we know that don't profess God, what do you think about a situation? Uh, you know, and sometimes, now I tell you, I've had sad folks tell me things uh, I unsaved that honestly, when I heard them, I give God the credit for giving them that because it's what helped me. It was a word spoken by an unsaved person that I was perplexed in my mind about. And, and I, 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 you know, it doesn't matter what it was, but I was doing some mowing and he, I, was gonna try, I was trying to sell him a tractor. <laughs> and, and, and we were talking about some things. And, and, and he spoke to me. He spoke to me the word of God. Amen. Yes. It wasn't that he was saved. God used him. Hey, if he can use a donkey, he can use yeah. Yeah. Right. Amen. Come on. So, so I'm telling you, it's not, it's not. But you need to know, recognize where it comes from. It comes from God. Yeah. Right. It didn't come from that person. It wasn't no, it wasn't no fortune telling. It wasn't, it was the word of God. See, and you know it right. when he speaks it. I knew it wasn't him that spoke that. I mean, it's his mouth, I heard it, but when I heard it, it was what I, I was troubled about. And, and God helped me with a, a thing that he had to say. So, so, so you take it from everywhere to come from. Pray, God will send you. 
I'm not telling you, sometimes we go, we, because it don't come like we want, we don't even take it to God. Uh, you know, we, 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 don't, we, we ain't going to say it, because it ain't like what we want to see. It ain't what we want. Uh, it ain't what we want to hear. So it is of God, and it is of God. He's just trying to help you. Uh, you know, uh, he knows the best. He knows the best way. All right, uh, give me, uh, hmm. all right, jump up to Hebrews, flip over to Hebrews chapter chapter 8. I'm missing something here. Uh, yeah, I am. Go ahead. Uh, Hebrews chapter 8. Give me, give me verse 6. Hebrews chapter 8. Now I want you to flip over to chapter 9. Then chapter, go, chapter 8, verse 6. Really? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Now Sorry. have he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant. Wow. Which was established upon better promises. Yeah. A better covenant, better promises. This is our Lord Jesus Christ. Flip over chapter chapter 9, verses 11, 12. But Christ being come a high priest of good things to come, yeah. by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, this is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Jesus Christ is that great apostle, proved by the scripture. Uh, not, not a man, God proved it. God backed it up. God bless y'all this morning. Appreciate you listening. You got problems, you got things, take it to the Lord. He, he knows, make things right with him. He'll answer your prayer. He'll help you. He loves you. He wants you, he wants you, he wants good for you. He desires that your soul prosper. All right, God bless you all this morning. Appreciate you. Continue your Sunday school. All right. Um, Jake, you come on with the pen. You You got somebody to do the first. Thomas is real, real sick, run fever. Uh, I talked to him yesterday, and he was 